Welcome to our lecture online. Our next geometric figure is a rectangle and they tell us that the length of the rectangle and I think I'm missing an L here. Let me put an L in here. Rectangle, there we go. The length of the rectangle is two more than three times the width and the area equals 33. Period here. Find the length of the two sides. So let's go ahead and draw a rectangle. So we have the width and we have the length. Now, if we let x equal the width, then how would we express the length of the rectangle? Well, it tells us that the length is 2 more than 3 times the width. So plus 2 for 2 more and 3x because x equals the width, so 3 times x is 3 times the width and then 2 more, that therefore equals the length. Which means the width is equal to x and the length is equal to 3x plus 2. So now we have a mathematical way of describing the length of the width in terms of a single variable x. They also tell us that the area equals 33. Now the area is equal to the length times the width, and I, I shouldn't use the x symbol for multiplication because then we confuse that with the variable x, so we'll just use a dot. So that means that the area, which is 33, equals the length which is 3x plus 2 times the width, which is x. And there's our quadratic equation. Now we're going to have to solve that for x, so let's multiply everything through. We get 33 is equal to 3x squared plus 2x. Moving everything over to one side, we get 0 is equal to 3x squared plus 2x minus 33. And now we have to factor that. So we get 0 is equal to the product of two binomials. Now since the numerical coefficient in front of the x squared term is not equal to 1, we may want to use, yes, the FOIL method. And to get 3, that can either be 3 times 1 or 1 times 3. And to get 33, well, that can be gotten by having 3 times 11 or 11 times 3. There's a negative sign there, so one must be negative, so let's put a negative here and a negative there. Now, why don't we repeat it again? It's because we already have all the possible combinations on the left side, so we don't have to put four possible combinations on the right side. So, how do we get the middle term? The middle term is 2x. So, we can go 3 times 11, because the directions is like this, but 3 times 11 already gives us 33. That's not likely going to give us the middle term. So I think if we use a combination of these two and these two, we're most likely to get the correct middle term. Let's give it a try. So 1 times 11, that's 1 times 11, plus 3 times a negative 3. 3 times a negative 3. Well, that adds up to 11 minus 9, which is equal to 2, which is the middle term I'm looking for. The middle term is 2x right there. So I got the right combination. That means I have an x minus 3 and a 3x plus 11. So x minus 3 and 3x minus 11. Is it minus 11? Uh, no, no, it's minus 3 plus 11 because this here is a plus. All right, so that will do it. Notice that minus 3 times 11 is negative 33, right here. And the negative 3 times 3x is minus 9. 11 times 1 is 11. 11 minus 9 is 2x. So we do get the middle term as well. All right, if we have two binomials multiplied together giving us 0, that means x minus 3 equals 0 or x 3x plus 11 equals 0, which means that x is equal to 3 or, here we go, 3x equals negative 11, which means that x equals negative 11 over 3. But this is not a possible solution because the length cannot, or the width cannot equal a negative number, so it must be this part of the solution, which means that the length or the width is equal to 3, and then 3 times 3, which is 9 plus 2, which is 11, is equal to the length. And sure enough, 11 times 3 does indeed give us an area of 33. So that is the correct combination, and that is how it's done.